Okay. Um, so what I want to do is I'm just going to quickly go through the construction process of making a pouring vessel using slabs. Okay. Uh, hold on. There we go. Now, there's a lot of experimentation um, that you can uh, uh, utilize in this project. Um, and, you know, the, the end result, again, we're, you're thinking about pouring vessels. I'm just going to make a really simple picture today. And I'm just going to show you how to, uh, like a couple of tricks and what to look for. And this is just kind of one way to use slabs. But once you understand how this stuff goes together and you go through the experience, you'll, you'll be able to take this method and technique into all sorts of different directions. Okay? And so, uh, the reason why we call it soft slab is we're, we want to take advantage of the clay when it's softer so that we can put it, um, you know, we can, uh, you know, bend it and manipulate it a lot easier. So these forms aren't going to be geometric. I want you guys to think about, like, rounded forms, okay? The next project, the hard slab, where we let our slab stiffen up, that would be a geometric type of vessel shape. So if you have ideas about, like, cubes and stuff like that, just put that on hold. Okay, think cylinder for this. Okay, and from a cylinder, we can make all sorts of different types of shapes, and we you can utilize the skills that you've learned from your coil pot process. You know, so we can build a cylinder with a soft slab, and then you know, you can like you know, push it out from the inside and create like all sorts of different types of shapes, and we can build different things and put them together. Okay. So just have an open mind. This is just a, a real quick demo and how to kind of set up a really consistent shape, okay? And I'm also going to show you how to attach like a spout or some sort of pouring um, mechanism and a handle, okay? And just kind of like what to look for. So hopefully, you know, this usually takes about 30 minutes, okay? So um, just, you know, are you guys comfy? <laughs> All right. Okay, so first, the first skill that you're going to struggle with is, um, oh man, I forgot the hair dryer, and I need that extension cord, so we're just going to forget about that. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can. Um, it doesn't matter. Okay, the first uh, skill that you're going to have to develop, okay, is stretching your slabs. Now... We've already kind of practiced that when we were making our bases for our coil pots, but now we're going to want to do it um, on a larger scale, and so it's just going to be a little bit more difficult for you. All right? Now, um, the first thing I do is I want to think about, you know, the type of, you know, the height that I want for my pot. These pots, they only need to be like six to eight inches, okay, for your exercise. I think for your project, I think it's like 10 to 12, okay, somewhere right in that range. But for this first one, we don't have to get very big. And so, you can see what I've done is I, I, I prepped my clay, I wedged it up really well, and then I started flattening it out. And the shape that I know that I'm going to need is a rectangle. So what I'm going to try and do is stretch this out into a rectangular shape so that I can be as efficient as possible with the material I've got, all right? The other thing, too, is that you, you want your clay soft, right? You don't want anything stiff already, okay? Um, you, again, the idea of this is to take, to take advantage of the plasticity of the material. So right now, I've got a slab that's like this high, okay? So that's pretty good. I know that I want my pot to be around this high. So if I make sure that, you know, the, the, you know, the shape that I'm starting with is at least six inches to eight inches high, I know that I can stretch this slab out in either this direction and this direction and get like a long rectangle. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so what I want to do is, and this is just going to take some practice, is I'm going to first stretch this out. And remember, you want to try and, and drag it. 
right? So you want it to stretch. You don't want to throw it straight down because it'll stick to the table. And, uh, you, you know, as I kind of throw this down, I, I let it fall, and it hits this lip, and then as it hits the table, it kind of expands, okay? So here we go. All right. Um, this is a lot of material, too, so you're probably not going to um, need all this material, but, um, you know, so sometimes it's easier to start with something a little bit bigger and in case you make a mistake, okay? Now, the other thing is that you notice how I'm always picking it up from this side, okay? That's actually rotating it. So, see, you, you want to make sure that you're rotating the slab as you stretch it out. Okay, so if you, if, you, if you stretch it out from both ends, then it will taper out evenly from the middle. Okay, if you, if you always stretch it out in one direction, then it will taper in one direction. That can cause issues with warping. Okay, so I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit more this way. And uh, I'm going to get rid of these ends for right now. I just kind of... And this material is still really soft, so, you know, I have this clay right over here, but you, you want to keep that covered with plastic, okay? That'll just, you know, um, keep your clay consistent and workable. Okay, the other thing that I'm going to experiment with is texture. Okay, so I've got these tools. I've got a couple of these serrated type tools, okay? Um, these are tools that... I don't have enough for everyone, so they are share, shared tools, okay? So just keep that in mind if you need to, like, sanitize them or something. Um, I've asked everyone that if you use these to wash them and sanitize them when you're done, so that, you know. Anyways, okay, so they're in the second drawer. See that, like, little plastic white bin? The second drawer down is where all of these types of tools are. There's just a couple of them. These are great for... Uh, all sorts of reasons, but I like to use them for texture, okay? And so, I just kind of use them to create, like, parallel lines. Okay, see that? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch this out, and it will change those lines, okay, into more of a pattern, okay? And there we go. So, you can see the difference, right? Okay. So what I'm trying to do is try and, I'm trying to prep my slab on the outside first. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is cut out the actual dimensions of the clay that I need to make my cylinder. Okay. In a cylinder, you have parallel lines, so parallel base with a parallel top. And then you have so much width that you need to create the circumference, right? So we've got to figure all that out. So I've got rulers and things and squares over here that are hanging up here. All right, they're always there because that's where we always put them. And we want to make sure that we clean them and, you know, clean them up if, when you're done using them. This is called a square. This helps us make perpendicular um, angles if you need to. It's also just a straight ruler. Um, I'm pretty comfortable, so I'm just going to kind of eye this up, and you're going to see when I cut this, okay, see the thickness of the slab there? It's like, you know, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. Okay, this is actually a really good thickness for your material. Okay, what you need to think about is, you know, how thick the material is as compared to how big your vessel is going to be. So this is a pretty small vessel, so I don't need anything that's too thick. If my slab is too thick, then it won't really bend in the area, right? Proportional to the size of the object that I want to make. If things are too thick, it, it won't really bend that well. So, you know, there's like um, a, a sweet spot for how thick your slab needs to be as to how large it's going to be. So if this is a really large object, then obviously I, I should use a, uh, a thicker uh, slab, okay? Um, the one thing that I would suggest is to try to stay away from getting too thin, okay? Anything under like a quarter of an inch or so, 
that, that's, per, that's getting pretty thin, okay? So you just do the best you can. Um, all right, so what I want to do first is, here, I want to make this my bottom. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to first cut a guideline, a bottom baseline. And, you know, I'm pretty good with and pretty confident with my straight line, so I'm just going to kind of eye it up and use this ruler. And I made it parallel with the, uh, with the uh, horizontal lines that I made with my tool. All right? And then if I want to make a, a, a cylinder... Um, sorry, there was a crack here. See this little crack right there? Okay, if I were to incorporate that into my vessel, it could make a weak spot and crack the whole way up. That's the posturized. So you definitely want to be careful about that. Okay, so back to my slab. All right. <clears throat> Let's say I want to make this like six inches, okay? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use seven inches. Yeah, I like seven. Okay, so I, I can take from my baseline here, I can just measure up seven, all right, and make a line. And over here seven inches, and now I have a line that's parallel with my baseline, all right? And that's going to be important. Okay, I'm also going to keep this. This might come in handy later, all right? So now I've got a parallel uh, rectangle. My sides, I'm not, I'm not so sure that I'm too worried about it. I actually like my seams. Again, I talked about seams in the video. I like my seams to not be just like perfectly straight lines. I kind of like them to like, you know, bend a little bit or something. So I just kind of randomly cut. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to wrap this slab around this cylinder. And that's what's going to give me the shape. These cylinders are usually stored right in this area. Okay, uh, I guess um, there's a couple over by Amani. All right, um, so I'll try and put some in everybody's spot. Okay. There's also, I have two of these bigger ones, <coughs> and maybe I'll, maybe I'll chop this in half, uh, and we can get three of them. There's one right here, and these are just a little bit wider, so that um, you can get a larger circumference and a larger vessel shape. Okay, that's, that's all. So, um, my recommendation is to, is to use a cylinder for this project. So what I want to do is make sure that I've got um, enough distance to wrap around my cylinder. So with these cardboard ones, there's this like little mark right here from where the cardboard spirals and where it cuts. So I could just use that and I'll put it right at the edge of my cylinder and I'll roll it to just kind of get an estimate to, you know, the length that I need to wrap my uh, my vessel shape. So I'm just gonna kind of like do like a, you know, just a cut. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna keep this. All right, this is gonna be valuable a little bit later. All right. Now, because I want this to be on the outside, I'm gonna flip it. And I learned this trick from Judith Varga, who you're going to learn about in the uh, Fuse Lecture Series. Okay, you're going to learn about her in two Fridays from now. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> okay. All right, so I can take one of these, like, little pieces of really thin plastic, and I'll just... Okay, so, um, so the next thing that I want to do here, okay, is um, I want to wrap this around, but... I want to be careful because when I have two slabs come together that are the same thickness, it'll create this really, really thick area right at the seam. And I, I don't really want that. So what I, if I taper both of my edges, okay, then it'll, it, they'll match up and it'll be more consistent with the rest of the vessel shape. Okay, so that's what I want to do. So I can take like one of my cutting tools here and just maybe use the handle or, you know, maybe something that rolls. There's a couple of rolling pins. And I'm just going to kind of compress the edges. 
All right, and what that will do is it will create a nice taper. And I don't need to, um, I don't need to push too hard. You don't want to thin it out so that it's so thin. Okay, but you can see that I kind of deform the shape, right? See those little tabs? So what I need to do is I'm just going to cut them so that they're flat, okay? If, if I don't cut them flat, then when I roll this together, it will create, you know, a tab there, and it might create, it, it might prevent it from standing up straight, okay? So there we go, and there we go. All right. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need to take a little piece of plastic and wrap whatever it is that you're going to use for your mold, okay? And I just take a little piece of plastic like this, and this that will prevent the clay from sticking to it, all right? And so what I'll do here is I'll just kind of wrap this up loosely. It doesn't have to be really tight. And then I'll tuck in my edges. Okay, you want to make sure your edges are tucked in because that loose plastic can get underneath your the bottom of your vessel shape and when you go to remove it it can tug it and rip your vessel okay so I'll, I'll demonstrate that in just a minute all right is this the bottom it is i think nope okay um so what i'm going to do is i've i'm already planning about how my textures are going to um be organized on my vessel shape and so I am going to roll my cylinder upside down so that when I take it off of here I can manipulate the bottom before I flip it onto the base that I make okay and that'll make more sense but you, you should think about that strategy right how you're lining things up okay so I can do just like a quick like little test roll here and I've got plenty. In fact, I've got maybe a little too much overlap. <clears throat> I don't like a lot of overlap, so um, I'm just going to cut some of that away and just kind of flatten it out a little bit. All right. Okay, and now I'm feeling pretty good. Now I'm going to take some slip and I'm just going to put some, okay, right on this edge. All right. So I'll just put a little bit of slip there. That'll help bond it. A lot of times these soft slabs, you can get away with just compressing them together because they're so soft, they'll stick. But I, I like to add slip. It just adds a little bit more um, security, okay? The other thing too is when I roll my slab over, I wanna make sure that I keep, okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna roll it over on this side. And the other thing, too, is I want to make sure that I'm going to roll my, my, uh, the bottom edge at the bottom edge of the cylinder, okay? Because uh, it, it's just easier to take out. You don't want to roll it in the middle, and then you got to slide it down, and it's kind of a pain. So if you do it towards the bottom, and you make sure that this uh, seam or uh, the edge is straight, you'll be fine. The other thing, too is that I want to make sure that I roll the bottom edge of my slab, I want to keep that straight as well. If you, if you roll it on like a diagonal or you get out of shape, then you'll have a slanted um, base, and basically what will happen is that your cylinder will lean. Okay, so you want to make sure here that you roll it, you know, towards the bottom, and then also that you roll your slab straight, not at an angle, okay? So here we go. So I could just use the plastic to help me. And I'm just going to kind of roll it around. And okay, and you can see right here, right? See how everything's lining up? All right. That will ensure that I have a straight and level cylinder. And what I could do is I could just kind of roll that over and I'll just compress it just a little bit so that I get a good bond. Okay, and there we go. So I've got a good bond here. And I can get rid of this piece of plastic. And uh, I'm gonna make sure, whoops. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that um, before I take this off, okay, that I'm gonna peel away all the plastic from underneath my edge 
so that when I pull the plastic out, it doesn't tug on this and rip and tear up my shape. All right, that can happen very easily. Um, so I'm going to put it um, right here on my on my little uh, decorator's wheel, and then if I unpeel the plastic here, I can just pull that right out. Yay! Okay, see how easy that is. All right, then I don't want to just rip out my plastic. It, it could tug and mess up your your um, slab here or your cylinder. So usually what I do is you can twist it and it will slowly kind of peel away from the sides and, and that's all you need. Right there it is. Okay, so the one thing I want to look at is to make sure that I get like a really nice bond here uh, on my edges. And so usually what I like to do is just take one of these serrated tools and just make sure that I, you know, get a nice bond. Um, you can see I've got a really nice cylinder. I usually like to also ensure that this is pretty level. I'm actually going to flip this. Um, I like this edge here is just maybe a little bit thicker. So I'm going to use this for my base, okay? Uh, because I like to um, just kind of expand my base a little bit. The other thing I like to do is I'm going to make it more of an oval. So I'm just going to kind of compress it. All right, and change its shape to an oval. Okay, and then I'll also just kind of tug on the sides a little bit just to kind of get a little bit more of like a, you know, like a taper outwards. Um, and then I'll also expand the very bottom so that it kind of tapers outward and I get more stability with my form. Uh, just has a better stance on it. Okay, so here we go. So uh, usually what I like to do is I, I normally like to um, give these a couple of minutes, you know, so maybe I'll make a, a couple of these at once. Um, but I usually like to give it like 20 minutes or so um, so that it stiffens up. Uh, you can also hit it with a hair dryer, um, but uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to move forward. Okay. Um, I'm just going to have to be really, really careful. The reason why I like to let them stiffen up is because they're so soft, they can change their shape, you can, you can kind of mess up their shape. So if you let things get stiff, especially working with saw slabs, if you, if you understand what you're putting together, you understand how to make all of your pieces, then usually what I will do is I'll make all of those pieces and then put them aside and then they'll begin to stiffen up. And then after they stiffen up, it's just a little bit easier to like put them all together. Uh, but uh, for the sake of demo, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't uh, create any issues. All right, so um, I'm gonna put a nice um, uh, amount of slip on the bottom edge here. Okay, and there we go. And I'm going to ensure that um, I have enough slip so that when I, you know, put this on my base, it's not perfectly level. So I want to make sure that there's slip that will fill up any gaps. All right. I don't want my pot to leak, right? This is a pouring vessel. It would be terrible if it, if it leaked. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, this probably isn't going to be big enough. So uh, I'm just going to make another base. Just real quick, all right, use my stretching skills. Okay, oh, I've got a crack. Oh boy, look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that. Ooh, this is gonna be tight. <laughs> okay, I don't wanna get a tooth in, but I, yep, I, I'm good. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just gonna, and you can see here, I've got my seam on the side, I just kinda left it. Okay, it's really nice and clean. It creates a really nice line there. I just, I've just incorporated that into my composition. I was thinking about that, and I'm, I'm not going to try and like, you know, smooth it over or anything like that. It kind of makes it look messy. So again, embrace your seams. Uh, think about how your seams become part of your composition. All right, here we go. So I'm going to carefully flip this, and yeah, make sure that I get a good connection here. And just kind of play with the shape a little bit. 
All right, and then I'm just going to kind of do like a rough cut around the base. Okay. All right, and this clay you want to keep like covered, okay, this extra clay, you want to keep covered so that um, you don't waste it, it stays soft, you can constantly use it, okay? Um, all right, so the other thing I want to do is just make sure I get a good connection, so I'm just going to kind of like, you know, tap it a little bit. That will like compress everything together, um, and I'm going to try to not deform it too much, but it's soft, and so it will deform a little bit. Um, I like to clean up the slip um, on the outside. You can use your finger. You can use like a little paintbrush or something. I'm just going to use a finger now. I am going to use a, a paintbrush on the interior because on the interior there's like slip inside there and if you don't clean it up, okay, it looks really messy and it's going to reduce the functionality of your pot. It's going to be hard to clean. Um, and so you just want to make sure that you smooth all the slip on the inside, on the inside seam. Um, it just, uh, you know, it's part of, you know, having good craftsmanship. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to, okay, do that once more. Now, this is going to be a pouring vessel. So what I want to do, as you can see, because I made it an oval, I've kind of formed these channels, right? So I've got a channel. Okay, and this shape is going to help channel the water towards my spout. And I'm just going to make a really simple spout. And I'm going to make it out of this. Um, there's all sorts of ways to make spouts. Okay, you can make them out of cylinders. Um, you can... Uh, it's endless. So, <laughs> what I'm going to do... Okay, now think about this. Uh, I'm going to make this shape... Okay, see this? I'm going to make this shape. Okay, and then I can fold it. Now, hopefully, uh, my clay is really short, so I really hope that it doesn't um, crack on me, because it might. Um, but anyways, I'm smoothing down the edges, all right? And then watch, so I can just kind of fold this. Yeah, man, this is... Uh... This clay is like kind of crappy. Okay, well, anyways, we're going to move on. So there we go. So I've got like a little bit of a spout here. Okay, and what I want to do is I just, I want to stick it on there. And so I'll center it, make sure that it looks really nice. Okay. And I don't want to be too horizontal. Like I don't want to be exactly horizontal because then I have to, you know, like pour the whole pitcher you know, and turn the whole picture. Uh, whereas I, I want it to, I want this to kind of be at an angle, right? So that it's easier to use. So you, all you have to do is pour it just a little bit and the water will flow out. You want to make it easy for the user, okay? So I'm just going to kind of mop this up, just kind of center it, all right? And that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to put some slip on the bottom edge here and up the sides. Okay, there we go. I can clean that up later, it doesn't really matter. And, okay, so here we go. So I've got a pretty good um, spout here. I've got a pretty good connection. Whoops. Make sure that everything's straight. And, ooh, boy, that's way off. Okay, so there we go. And I just did some fix in there, and okay, I kind of like this. It's kind of nice. All right. Now, one of the problems is, ooh, man, that's crooked. You got to make sure that it's straight. All right. You don't want your spout to be like pointed in that direction because that's where your water is going to go. <laughs> okay. So you want to just take some time and make sure everything's lined up. Now, the other thing too is you can see how this part of the pot is still in the way. So I need to cut that out so that the water will flow down the spout, okay? So here we go. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Take my knife. I like to cut it down the, like, you know, cut it down the center first and then cut up the sides, okay? And that just kind of makes it a little bit easier to remove. Man, this 
this is getting all messed up. Okay. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to cut down the center and then down the side and just kind of clean that up. All right. I will also clean up all the slip and make sure that I get a really nice connection. All right, there we go. I also want to smooth out the seam where it meets with the inside of my spout so that um, you have a really smooth transition um, for your water to flow in and out or whatever it is that you're pouring. Um, you want to try and make it as easy as possible. So I'm using a, a brush that's kind of wet here. It just kind of cleans up the slip. Okay, and now some of my symmetry is a little bit off, but I can, after this stiffens up, I can use like my shaving tool or my knife tool to kind of refine all of these different parts. And, and that's what I'm going to do. Right now I'm just trying to put this together, okay? All right, so the next part is I want to, um, I like when my pots kind of, you know, have like a slope to them. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run off, I'm going to design my cut off of this curve, okay? And I'm just kind of doing like a mock-up line here. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Okay, and now I'm going to go for it. Now I'm going to cut it. Ooh, it's a little low, but... Okay. All right, and so now what I've got is this kind of sloping you know, trajectory of my form is kind of nice, I guess. And so, uh, but I also have these seams um, on the top that I don't really like, and so I kind of want to hide those, and so I, I, I've got this thing that I do. I don't know, that's kind of weird looking, but uh, it's kind of nice, I guess. Yeah, why not? We're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it, okay? It's fine, we're experimenting today. This is a little bit outside of my usual choices in shape and form, but um, I tell you guys to experiment all the time, so here we go. We're going to experiment. So I'm going to leave it and see how I like it after I fire it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so what I can do is uh, I want to I kind of hide the seam so I can create like a... A, a strip of clay that I can add there. Um, all right, so I could probably use this one. Let's use this one. All right, so basically what I want to do is I want to thin this out. And again, this clay is really short, um, meaning that it's not very plastic, and so it rips and tears really easily. Case in point. So let me see if I can deal with this. Now I'm trying to stretch this out so that it gets really thin. I want it to be thin so it's really flexible. Okay, um, and oops, that's going to be an advantage for what I want to do. And it looks like I've got a pretty good piece here. So I'm going to cut that. And I like this seam right here. That's kind of really nice. So I'm going to put that on the outside actually. And that's nice. I like that a lot. Okay, I'm just going to kind of smooth that. All right, so I think I have enough. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of slip here, right across that joint, and then down my seam. All right, and then I can take my piece here, and I want this to be on the outside. This seam here, it's just really nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to push it down. There we go. I've been doing these to my pots for a little while. Oops, man, I just keep messing it up though. Okay, and oh yeah, just barely. All right, so there we go. I want to cut this straight, and so now I've got 
this kind of nice like scene at the top of my pot, right? Okay. Okay, very nice. All right, and I'll, um, I'm just kind of reshaping it a little bit. Now, the next thing, too, that I want to do is make sure when I put my handle on, all right, I want to make sure that it's in line with my spout so that everything is, like, in line. So when I pick up my spout or my handle, my spout isn't in that direction. Okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> so uh, I just kind of want to line this up. Now, um, I'm going to use some... Some of this clay. Now, there's all sorts of ways to make handles. Usually, you want to save and use the most plastic clay um, that you can. It's hard to make handles with short clay. So, let's uh, let's do our best. Now, um, again, there's all sorts of ways to make handles. Okay, uh, but I'm going to stretch a handle. I want you guys to learn how to stretch. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to stretch this as like a little coil. Um, and then I'm going to flatten it out and just wait to see what happens, okay? Um, now, I stretch it out in one direction because I want it to taper. I want it to taper. I want it to get from, you know, thin to thick. Okay, I actually have too much material here. So, I, I've got it started, so this is, this is looking pretty good, okay? Now, um, I'm just going to kind of cut my shape just kind of rough it out a little bit for my handle. I don't want a too thick of a handle, you know, that's like the mistake that, you know, beginning potters make is they make these handles that are so wide that you can't grab onto them. You want to just be able to use your fingers or something. All right, so, so this is what I've got. Now I'm going to smooth out my edges with my finger. All right, maybe put a little water on this because I don't want this to crack. I really don't want this to crack. <laughs> you can't put a cracked hand on a pot. It will continue to crack forever <laughs> until it falls apart. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in, um, I'm gonna put this in shape. Okay, and here we go. And I'm going to attach this handle. Okay, just real quick. And I'm going to attach this handle just real quick. <laughs> and, um, I'm going to make sure that it's straight. And my handle's a little bit too big, so I'm just going to cut it. Okay, let's do this again. I make like a little tab there, okay? And then I can put some slip on there. And I'll make sure that it's in line with my spout. And then as I compress this, okay, I want to make sure that it's straight and vertical, right? Okay, and then I can put my hand inside here and just kind of compress it. All right, now I'm getting these cracks in here, like I said, but I'm just going to keep moving and hope for the best. I'm just going to reshape it a little bit. Okay. And what I can do is I can clean up my... <laughs> watch, watch out. Uh, I can clean up my edges here of my handle by just kind of cutting them into shapes. And then I can compress those down and then I, I get like a really nice clean edge for my handle. Okay, so here, right? So here we go. Make sure I get a good connection. Okay. And when you're all done, then what I'd want to do is I want this to stiff it up. Okay, once you get all these parts on, you want this to stiff it up. And then we can, you know, use our knife tools to, like, clean up our base. You know, clean up, you know, our spout and any other things, any other things that we want to. And there we go. And what's interesting about this handle is you can see it's got this 
you know, shape to it that reinforces the overall shape of the vessel, okay, so that everything kind of is sloping in this direction towards the spout. Um, there's a lot of cracks on this handle, so it's not making like a perfect loop. Um, so typically what I would do is I would remake this handle, but, uh, you know, I think uh, for the um, demo purposes, we're just going to move on. Okay, so there we go, and uh, good luck with that. We're going to continue to make vessels over and over again, pouring vessels, so uh, I look forward to seeing what you produce. All right. Okay, that is it.